Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we will be reviewing the new QRX quick release system from the guys at Cube Controls. A good looking and quite functional quick release solution that uses a shim system to adjust the connection tightness and features a USB cable pass through element that gives the user a wheel side wireless solution that does not rely on a wireless signal. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So let's get to it. So let's take a closer look at this QRX from Cube Controls. Firstly, when you take it out of the box, it's a good looking piece of kit. It's very well done on the machining and the anodization. You can see that it's the usual style from Cube Controls that has these bits cut out in the CNC machining process on both sides. And now we have this ring, a pull ring, that is done the same way. Now this is made out of 7075 aluminum. So it's a good aerospace type aluminum, very stiff. So I'm not too concerned about the machining done here with all this stuff taken out. I've never had a problem with it anyway with the cube control wheels. This one also, this is a GTX that I'll be reviewing. It also has the same design on the hub that's on the back of it out of the box. So yeah, typical of the guys at cube controls and their styling cues. It does come from Italy after all. <laughs> all right, so there's two halves of this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this ring. And of course you just pull this ring like you would any other quick release and the bottom or the wheelbase part will release. And then we have this part on our wheel and we put our wheel somewhere safe. So we'll take a look at this part first. Now this comes in, this is the wheel side at 264 grams when I'm weighted in or 9.3 ounces. And yeah, it feels pretty light. The whole assembly is pretty light compared to like a Q1R or a HRS zero play when you have those in hand. This has got to be the lightest system that I've had in hand to date. This is how the thing works. It has a different kind of style here. If you look at, we have a hollow in here and it has two steel bars here. Now those are stainless steel. I've already done the magnet test. So there's stainless steel bars in there. When you pull this back towards you, you can see what's happening there. The bars are recessing. And that allows this conical piece that goes on the wheelbase to come in and seat with the grooves that are machined on each side of that. So it's kind of rounded here and it's flat down here on the bottom. And this bottom also contains a shim container that we can actually put different size shims in to make it tighter if we need to, as far as the tolerance is concerned. Now this one from the factory is good and tight, but later on you never know where the wear and tear on these things, how you might need to adjust it. But we'll go over the adjustments as far as shimming it up in a different segment. This just goes in, this would be on my wheelbase and I would just put this down like this, pull it back on my steering wheel. And this is pretty, pretty stiff, the spring is. But again, this is a brand new setup. So typically brand new setups are gonna be a little bit stiffer than if you've used them a couple of months down the road. So you just pull it back like a normal quick release and just shove it home. It didn't click, did it? <laughs> it didn't click, but it's in there. So it's kind of quiet as far as that goes. I think it went all the way in. I'm looking at this gap here and trying to figure out, well, did it go all the way in? So I am going to just give it a little tap. Yeah, it looks a little better. I think it didn't go quite all the way in. But when you're sitting there and you're putting your wheel on and you have this attached to a wheelbase, especially a direct drive wheelbase, and it's mounted solidly, it, you're just going to push the whole wheel and you have much more leverage when you're pushing this stuff on. Let's go ahead and take it back off. Now, we'll stick with this guy for a minute. Inside of this, you'll see there's some pins. And you may have noticed on the spigot, there's some gold patches there that these pins are going to come in contact with. Now these pins are spring loaded in there. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'll try to push one down while I'm looking at the camera at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, each one of these is spring loaded. And that is obviously so they maintain a good contact with the contact pads on the other side of this conical unit or what they call the spigot or wheelbase side. Now the reason for that, and you probably already wondered, what's that plug back there for? is that we can actually transfer the power through this, through a wired connection, but it's a solid wire connection. And we can use this USB plug over here on our wheelbase if we want to. Now, of course, 
any wheel that you get from Cube Controls, or if you just have a regular USB wheel, you're not even going to use it. Obviously, you wouldn't need it, or you wouldn't have the same cable you need. But this wheel has a connector that comes out the back, like this. So it comes straight out the back. If I use this system, this is against my wheelbase, it would be hanging down. Whether or not I would use it this way really depends on the ergonomics of my sitting position, where my wheel's located, and obviously I don't want this thing hanging down and, and hitting my knees while I'm driving. So again, it's subjective whether or not you would use that. All right, so on the back of this, staying with <laughs> the wheel side, that's where most of the stuff's going on. There is a four-wire cable here. We have a Molex plug, and it is actually plugged into the back here. And of course, that allows the pass-through for the pins for electrical and data USB pass-through, and that's going to plug in the back of our steering wheels. All the more recent cube control wheels have this in it. And as again, it's a four pin Molex on the actual PCB or circuit board that's inside that we'll see this later when I'm doing the GTX review, the actual review of this wheel. So you would plug it in there and then we would mount it. Or you could unplug it from here and then plug it in. And then as you're mounting it, you could plug it back in here. Depends on the sequence. It really depends on what you want to do and how easy it goes on. Now they did provide in the kit these guys here. So that could help you kind of grab this. And we'll see that when I actually do the install and kind of push it down into the Molex plug that's inside of our wheel on the circuit board. But like I said, we'll get to that when we get to that. So yeah, other than that, you know, have, we have a couple of screws here. So this is serviceable. We can actually unscrew this board and it will come off. I suppose it'll come off the back, it looks like to me. See, you don't know the lights there. If we could take these screws off and disassemble the whole thing if we want to. But remember, it's under spring pressure and it's a pretty tight spring. So when you do that, you're going to want to, let's see, just coil this guy back up. Tell you what I'm going to do. Let's see how I'll just go ahead and pull this back out. There we go. So there's our cable. And I'm just going to put that aside while I'm playing with this. Yeah. So we also have a couple of screws on the front here. And I suppose you have to take some of the pressure off of this and undo the screws. And it looks like this front piece here, see the line around there, will come off. But I don't want to do that because it's under spring pressure. Now, if there was something I needed to fix with this or, or there was some kind of a maintenance issue, then I would go ahead and do it. But yeah, I just don't want to do it for the review because I haven't used it yet. And I want to make sure that everything works. I typically don't take anything apart in a SRG review until I've already driven it and tested it well before I take it apart because you never know what's going to happen when you start pulling stuff apart, right? Let's talk about the spigot. And we've already kind of talked about it already. Again, we had the pads up here. We had this conical design or shape to it only on one half and again on the bottom we have these two screws that are holding in a another piece of aluminum that has some shims underneath now these shims they come in your kit you get the 0.15 millimeter and you get a 0.10 you get five shims each now I actually took these out so I could measure them and see what the thickness is how accurate these thicknesses are running here so let's see. I'm not sure which one this is, but we should be able to find out. Okay, so I would call that the 0.10 because it's 0.12. I'm going to flip it around because sometimes you get a different message or measurement rather. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, 0.11. So this has got to be the 0.10. I'm going to go over and get this one. And this one already feels thicker actually in hand. It doesn't feel as flexible. And yeah, that's a 0.16. So there we go. Now, this apparently already has some 0.15s installed because you're supposed to get five of each. And I only got two, I believe, or three. Yeah, two of the 1.5s. So there's probably three in here. Now, it's curious. One thing that I did notice here when I was looking at this, it's curious to me that they would take the wheelbase side to be where you adjust. Because if you bought, let's say I bought three of these and I had them on three different wheels, but the tolerances that I use one wheel more than the other, or the original tolerances weren't quite the same, then really to get a super tight fit, the way they've done this is I'd have to adjust this every time I want to use a different wheel. doesn't seem like a logical way to go to me. It seems that you would want some kind of system in this side to adjust for, or if you had a different type of system that was easier to adjust what's going on under here for the, for the tight fit to pull that in and make it tight. 
just one of those things that I think about out loud when I'm doing reviews, <laughs> when I'm looking at stuff. So yeah, if I had two different wheels and the tolerances were a little off on one, one would be nice and tight because I've got my shims in there. Let's say the other one was loose when I put it on. Well, there's only one way to fix it, and that's to change the shims. So you would really need, well, you can't even do that because if you, even if you had another one of these, you still have to take the whole thing off with bolts, and it really defeats the whole purpose of the quick release system. So it's something to consider when you, when you think about this design. I'm not sure why they went with it that way, but anyway, it's my job to show you guys that stuff. And of course, on the back, we have some wiring done back here for the USB. It's got a nice water seal. It's got a little seal there in the cap. So you can spill your beer on this and probably won't worry about messing things up. But there's our USB port in there. Right. So what else are we going to talk about on a closer look? I think we well, get some tools with this. And all of the bolts in this, for some reason, they've gone with Torx. We get two of these. Don't pay attention to these guys over here because they're for the wheel that I'm reviewing. So that section's for those guys. This section right here without all that stuff. But you do get two of these, and these are Torx bits. See the shape of that? Kind of looks like a hex at first, but then you can see the star shape of a Torx bit there. So you use the Torx bit for these. They give us some button head screws for obviously attaching these things to our wheel and attaching it to our wheel base. And this is a 25, and this is the wrench that we use to tighten it up with. They also give you a smaller one, and that's used to open our little door in here and change out shims depending on what you need to shim it up to make it nice and tight when you put it in here. What else we get? Some bolts here. We get some hex head, and those are all M5s, by the way. These are some hex head M5s with an M8 size wrench that, that goes on. So they give you enough to mount this to the wheel over here. And they give you enough to mount this to a wheel base hub adapter that has a 70 or 50.8. So we've got two different patterns here. And another thing about this is there's also, a, you even go with three, well, I guess you could do six if you wanted to do two different ways of attachment. But if you look in here, there's threaded, there's threads in every alternating set of holes here. And this one has threads in it there. See these two are threaded. And then if I turn this over to these guys, they're not threaded. They don't have any threads in them. So that's just a consideration when you put this on. We're only going to be using three M5 bolts, which in the past I really never had a problem with, but I tend to want to put six in if I can. If there's six holes to put them in. And that's just me. Probably not really necessary, but I've never had anything go wrong when I just had three is what I'm saying. But yeah, it's just the perfectionist in me that wants to do it as many as I can or give as many bolts in there as I possibly can. Once we have all this together, it's a very solid unit. And see, there's still a little gap there See in my shirt there. And if I tap it a little bit, that gap gets a lot less, see? So again, I'm putting that off to newness and because I don't have a wheel like this attached to this and I'm pushing it on that way and I don't have this spigot side or wheelbase side attached. That's what I'm attributing that to, having to bump it a little to get it to go. All right, so anything you want to talk about closer? I think I said, oh, one more thing. You do get this nice book here for the QRX, and it tells you all about how to connect it, what it's made of, and basically everything I just told you. Yeah, how to connect the wiring. Let me get this out of my bright lights so you guys can see it. it also, it should have a shim adjustment piece in here, I believe. There it is. Shows you how to stack up your shims, but I'll do a live view of that. Obviously, we'll take this apart a little bit and take a look at that. And also how to, if you don't know how to put your three bolts in, and again, it's also describing that there are threaded and non-threaded holes in these flanges. So yeah, I guess that's it for the closer look. We'll just get on to the next segment. So I thought we'd do a quick video on the shim system for this QRX quick release system. Again, we have this little cover here and the shims are underneath that. And again, they will illustrate that in your little manual you get. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these out. First off, it is a very tight fit. Do that one more time while I'm thinking about it. I can put this down here and just push down on it. Like I would be pushing the wheel on if I had it mounted already. 
Now it's going on closer. If you saw the closer look, it's going on closer or tighter now, seems to me, than it was before. And that doesn't surprise me because with a little bit of use, sometimes the anodization inside or, you know, it'll start wearing into itself, if you will, start fitting a little better. And this looks like, I'm going to go ahead and tap it and see if it changes. I don't think it will. Yeah, it may change just a hair, but not much. So it's locked in pretty good. Doesn't I don't feel any kind of looseness in this. It's very tight. But then again, we're going to have to mount it up to the wheel and to a wheel base that's securely mounted itself to find out for sure. So we'll go ahead and just pop it off and pull this off. And these are Torx bits. And this is a T10. I'm going to be using my wires. They do have a wrench. They have two wrenches that come with this kit to use for the screws and to get this door off. But I always like to use something with a little bit more quality to it, <laughs> if you will. And it's not that these are not quality, but it's just not the same thing when you have a nice grip like this on it. And again, Torx bits instead of hex, which is, well, different. Made me dig in my toolbox a little more than I normally do <laughs> to find my, I don't use these a lot. But it sure is nice to have a tool when you need it, right? Okay, these are about out now, I think. Let's get this one out. And then we get this one. And this is what they look like. Little flathead deals. Probably M. Twos, I imagine, not even an M3, but very small. And you can see my little top already fell off. This little top from the, it has a wedge shape to it. Because if you look at this way, these are flat, the way the shims lay into this cavity in there. But this has got an angle to it, so that's why that piece is wedged, obviously. So let's see what we have in here. We've got one, two, one, two, three, four. Actually, there's another one in here. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, there we go. We got five. <laughs> All right, so five of these came out, and I believe there's a mixture here because some of them feel a little bit less flexy than others. This one feels pretty flexy here, right there. So let's go ahead and do a quick measurement on these, see what they have in here from the factory to make this a nice and tight fit. And we have a 1-1 there, which I'm sure is the 110. Remember, we get a 0.10 or 0.15 shims. So I put that aside. And this feels thin too, so it's probably another 0.10. Yep, 0.11. And then we have a thicker one. You can tell in between these just by picking them up. Let's see, that's the 1.5. And we have another 1.5. I can just tell by feeling them. Two more 1.5s. So 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, and two 1.0s. So what I'm going to do just for experimentation purposes, I'm going to take one of the one fives out and see how it fits with just the two one fives and the two one zeros installed. It should be rather loose. So we're going to find out. And then I'll, once I'm done with the video, I'll put it back in and make it tight again. So we're going to put our wedge back in. We want to make sure you put this in the right way. There's these recessed holes. All right, so counter bores or counter sunk, if you will. Slide those in. And we'll put our screws back in. So let's see what we got. Put it back on. And I should be able to tell by feel how this goes on, if it's any different or not. Yeah, I can tell right away. And it went all the way home. And there's a little bit of play in there now. <laughs> I can feel a little bit of play. But it went home a lot easier. Let me see if it, I can just press it on. Yeah. So actually, I kind of like the way that's working better. It has a nice snap to it, but I don't even hear that. It's a little loose now. And the one five made it very tight. So what I'm going to do real quick here is I am going to put another one O oh, if I can get it. Find one here. Which one is oh, this one? Make sure you get the right one, right? Even though I know one's a little bit flexier than the other. I still want to measure it just to be sure. Yeah. So I'm going to put one of these in. Get these guys out of the way so I don't get it mixed up. So 
Now we got it in there. That's what it feels like now. Start it. Nice click in. I didn't have to push any further. It looks like it's seated all the way. You know what? I'm not getting any flex. Feels nice and tight, actually. So I'm thinking maybe they went a little bit too tight at the factory. Yeah. Of course, again, I'm going to have to get it mounted to the wheel before I, I make my final decision on if I like that. But I like the way it's popping on now. Remember before, I'd really push down and then tap it. But now it's doing like you would think a quick release should act. It pops down when you push it on. And goes all the way on. Seats all the way. Yeah, I like that. It was worth the effort doing the screws, wasn't it? <laughs> Now I have it dialed in, all I have to do is mount it to the wheel, mount it to my, the motor, the direct drive motor I'll be using, and then we can test it out. But we'll get to the mounting segment next. Now it's time to attach our quick release system to the wheel, and I'll be attaching the wheelbase side, or what they call the spigot, on the wheelbase, and we'll see that in a minute. So remember, I'm going to use the pass-through feature, where we have the USB cable pass through function on this hub. I did take the cable off because I'm going to put this part into the wheel first before I put it back on here. Just going to make it a little easier to do the assembly. And yeah, it's pretty simple stuff here. This is a Molex plug and you can see, let's go ahead and turn this around so you can see the, see there's some couple of slots on the top of this. And you can also see the pins here are oriented more towards those slots than they are towards the bottom of that plug. Same thing going over here. We have tabs on the top of this plug. Get a good view of it here. And those tabs are obviously going to go into those slots. And you can see the pins are also oriented towards those tabs. Easy enough. So I have to get down in here though, which is down in the hole. <laughs> they do give you with the wheel a set of these tweezers. And I think these tweezers are mainly for putting your decals on so you can kind of peel it off and put it down instead of getting your fingers all over them. But they can also be used to put a plug in, believe it or not. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to take the plug and you're not going to be able to see this. I'm going to look straight down in the hole here and just make sure I have it oriented properly. I'm going to put it in the tweezers like this so that I'm not really pinching these wires. I'm just holding it. And then I'm going to use the tweezers to Get me some levers to push down on the plug, the plastic part of the plug, to seat it in the receiving plug in here. So let's go ahead and get that done. Let's see, I'm going to go this way because it's straighter this way. No curl in it. So I'm just going to get it lined up and then go deeper with the tweezers and get it on that plastic part of the plug. Push it down. There we go. That's beautiful. All right. So now it's going to be easier for me to plug this plug back into the hub when I'm putting it on. Now remember, if you saw a closer look segment, there are threaded holes and non-threaded holes on these hubs, like with all of the Cube Controls hubs. And here's a set of the threaded ones. I don't know whether you guys could see that, but there's the threaded one. And then right next to it, we'll have the ones that don't have threads. So they give us six of these screws, and these are M5 screws. They are... 25 Torx bits, I've come to find out because of the kit that I'm going to be using, the size that I pulled out of the kit. And there are 10 millimeters long, right? There could be a little bit of an issue here if we have a, the way I want to orient this onto this hub on the wheel, if I have a, a threaded screw hole going to another threaded screw hole down here. Because a lot of times when you go through something that has threads, and you in the hole on the other piece has threads, the screw, the starting thread on the screw just never lines up quite right. So you can't get it to catch and go all the way in. But in this case, this is the top. I want to make sure I orient this properly, obviously, because we don't want this bigot to end up with the plugs sticking on straight up like that, do we? So then it's easy to, de to determine that because we have the logo on the top. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and set it on here, but it, I've already tested this. If I just test fit this, put this back down in there, I can see that these holes, the way they're lining up, will be a non-threaded hole on this side 
and a threaded hole in this side. So we're no worries there. It's not going to be any issue. So again, I'm just going to plug this into the hub. And get that to seat to where I'm happy with how it's sitting in there. And I am happy now. So we can continue. And it's just a matter of sitting this down here. Now the, the cable is going to kind of pull this around a little bit. But yeah, just put it where you need to be. And then go ahead and get your screw started. Let's go ahead and get my screw in there. And then again, we should have one over here. It's going to be a triangle pattern. And then one more over here. And everything is matching up really well here, as you might expect, being machined at the same place all the time. The tolerances are probably very good here. All right. Now, because it's kind of hard to get a driver, if you will, a T25 driver down here because of these things aren't quite lining up, I'm going to use my little mini ratchet 400. And this thing is a lifesaver if you guys have ever seen these things. They're very cool because, first of all, well, most ratchets, you have to move them a bit to engage the ratchet click and be able to turn the bolt or whatever you're trying to do or whatever you're trying to turn. But this is a very finite clicking mechanism. This is a solid piece of stainless steel. I've been using these for years. They're really great, these mini ratchets, and they come in different kits. This kit is with the Super Deluxe and has everything you would ever need in it for... Well, most everything. Just every once in a while, I'll run across something I can't use. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up with this, but you can see how great this is because it'll fit down in there, and I can use a ratchet to actually tighten up my bolts, which is very cool. As soon as I get it tight enough to engage the ratchet mechanism. There it goes. So you can see how that works. Very neat. And, yeah, if you can't reach something... These kind of tools are worth their weight in gold, <laughs> to me anyway. And you can put a lot of torque on these if you want, even though you don't really need to torque this down like crazy. Good. Everything's feeling good now. Nice and tight. Yes. So there we have it. We're ready to go. Now remember, when we put this on, we're going to have to get... <laughs> this is the thing about quick releases with a wheel like this, with all this going on here. You have to kind of reach underneath it as you're putting it on and on the other side and pull the ring back and get it to go on. And So it's not going to be the easiest thing to get on and off. But then again, we'll have to wait till we get everything mounted up to see. Next, we'll go ahead and mount the spigot over on my Cole Morgan 54G servo motor that we're going to be using. Now we're going to install the wheelbase side, or spigot, onto our flange here, or our adapter that clamps down on the shaft of our Cole Morgan motor. And again, the same thing here. I don't really have to worry about where I orient this, because you can change the center on the wheel in the software, or the driver application, easily enough. And we have M5 threaded holes all the way around here in a 70 millimeter PCD pattern, so we'll be using the 70 millimeter PCD pattern on our wheel side piece. And I'm just going to hold it up there. And this is going to line up in a hole that does not have threads on it. And just go ahead and get it started like that. I don't want to go all the way in just yet. And this will be a triangle pattern as I'm putting these in. I'm only going to be using three. I think that will suffice. And we'll put one on this other side down here. Looking good. So, now all I have to do is tighten everything down. And again, I'm going to be using my little mini ratchet 400 to grab it. Now, the thing with this is, it's hard to hold this while I'm torquing down on these bolts with just my hand, right? Because it's, you know, it wants to turn on you as you're torquing down on this stuff. So, what I use is this strap wrench. Used for oil filters and all kinds of things. I use this for a lot of stuff. It's really great. So, all you do is, go ahead and put my tool down for a second. It doesn't go anywhere. Slip it over. I've already got it pre-configured for this hub. And just kind of slip it over. Because it is rubber, it will do that. And now I can just hold it there like this. 
while I tighten down my screws. Easy enough, but it does give you the leverage that you would not have trying to hold it in your hand. Like that. Good. Now again, I think three is going to be fine here. I don't think we're going to have any problems. Go ahead and get the last one. There we go. I think that's nice and tight. I'm going to go over to this last one over here just to hit it one more time, just to get a feel for it. There we go. And again, you don't want to torque this too much. You can snap one of these. And that would be bad, obviously. All right, so that's how easy it was to get the wheelbase side, or what they call the spigot. Make sure everything's nice and clean there. And yeah, so now we're ready to put the wheel on and see how that goes. So now we're ready to mount the wheel using the QRX quick release system. And before I do that, I just want to make a note here that if you saw the using the shim segment, I took a 0.15 shim out of here and put a 0.10 in. And it was easier to use on the bench when I did that and felt better to me. But again, I also said that I might have to change it back because once we have it solidly mounted, which we do now, we have it mounted to this direct drive servo motor and it's also mounted very stiffly and solidly to this P1X 15 millimeter thick plate that once I put the wheel on the first time, I could tell it was too loose. So I went back in, pulled the two screws back out, took the 0 0.10 out, put the 0.15 back, and we're good to go. So the guys doing this at the factory know what they're doing. <laughs> they probably have, they might even have a test bench or something set up that's very solidly mounted where they test them. Anyway, just wanted to, to say that. So. Yeah, now we're just going to stick this on. It's very easy to do, and you just kind of line it up there. And you don't have to pull the ring back to put it on. You just kind of get it lined up and shove it on. There you go. And it's nice and stiff. It feels good to me. I'm going to look at the video, though, and see if there's any flex here. But I can feel a little flex, but any wheel I can get some kind of flex out of. Some more than others, obviously. But this feels stiff enough that I'll be very happy with this, using it. And, and really, I'm really concerned about stiffness when I'm pushing and steering, because I use a pushing motion when I do steer. Yeah, this feels very good to me. I like, I like what I'm feeling here on this, on this connection. Now, the connection itself, we talked about the shims and how the shims are on the wheelbase side. And if we don't have perfect tolerances on the wheel side, quick release mechanism or the socket in there, the female part that yeah, you'd have to reshim it to fit another quick release. And I sent an email asking Cube Controls about that, and they said they tested no less than 50 of these quick releases, the wheel side bits, against one spigot that was shimmed properly, and all of them fit tightly all the same. That's how good their quality control is on these quick releases. That's what they told me in the email. Of course, I don't have another one to test, so there's no way for me to verify that here at the SRG but I'm just letting you know the official manufacturer's take on why they used this system and designed it the way they did. Right. Take the system off. Very easy. I have plenty of room to get around here with my fingers. I was thinking about at first that, you know, I might have to, you know, get contorted to get around here, but I'm sitting in my C position, not really leaning forward much at all. And just, yeah, as soon as you, as soon as you pinch it, it falls right off just like that. So no worries there. Does a great job. I kind of like what's going on here. It feels good. So now all I have to do is get in and start driving it. We're at Sebring and iRacing in the Ferrari 488 GT3. Not a lot to talk about here, guys. You know, a quick release system has only one job to do, really. And that's to make sure we have a nice, solid, flex-free connection to our wheelbase that's putting out force feedback. And as far as that goes, I can check off yeah it passed barry's test on that because i can't perceive any flex or any difference in the feel between the q1r or the zero play quick release i normally run so yeah it does it quite well no problems no complaints everything's fine there the shim system i did come back to the original out of the box shim system or configuration rather if you guys watched any of this video in the part where I was actually showing how the shim system works. I changed it around to make it feel a little better on the bench as far as when I connected it. 
But once I got it onto a solidly mounted wheelbase like this, it was too loose and I had to go back to the original configuration. So the guys at Q Controls know what they're doing. <laughs> so anyway, good connection, no complaints there. You know, the shim system is one of those things I'm still, you know, I'd, I'd like to have a couple of other wheel site quick releases to test the statement that Cube Control said that all of their wheel site quick releases are manufactured closely enough as far as tolerances are concerned that it's never going to be an issue of having several wheels with their quick release wheel side and the spigot side or the wheelbase side being the same. And yeah, they're going to all going to be very tight. And yeah, it's just one of those things I'd like to test myself, but I can't. So I really can't, you know, say either way on that. The wireless function of this, if you want to call it wireless, I know Fanatec calls theirs wireless, and now you see this is called wireless. But in my book, wireless is a radio signal traveling over the airwaves, and this is not what that is. But anyway, as far as not having wires on your steering wheel, yes, it passes that test. But yeah, it's not a true wireless system. But Again, it is able to, if, again, this is a proprietary system and you have to have a cube control wheel with their circuit board and the button plate to be able to utilize it. But if you do, then yeah, you can use this and you know, you'll never have to worry about unscrewing the wire or taking the wire out again if that bothers you, which personally, it doesn't bother me when I do it every day. So overall, everything is working fine. I'm running the same lap times I normally do in the Ferrari here at Sebring. So I really don't have anything to complain about here. It's just, like I said, getting the job done, guys. So if you're in the market for a quick release, this might be something you want to look at. Except for, again, the caveat that the shim system is all on the wheelbase side. And I just don't know what kind of variances there may come up in that kind of a system over long-term use. So anyway, just want to say that. <laughs> anyway, you can see it's working quite well because I'm catching slides. <laughs> Getting a little slippery there. So anyway, we'll just go ahead and get on to the final thoughts. thoughts on the QRX quick release system from the guys at Cube Controls. Out of the box, like most gear I have received from Cube Controls, this kit has a professional look, feel, and finish to it. Just a pretty piece of kit here. It has some nice styling cues in the flanges, which conveys a stylish but functional intent. And of course, these design cues match perfectly with hubs on all the Cube Control wheels. This unit uses a cable pass-through function, moving the USB cable connection to the wheelbase or spigot side of the QRX's assembly. This allows you to use the cube control wheels as a wheel side wireless solution without relying on a wireless signal. I had no problems with cable clearance when installed this way on my setup. The QRX uses a wheelbase side shimming system to create a very solid feeling connection to the wheel side assembly. Using different thicknesses of metal shims in a stack secured by a top aluminum plate. My QRX was properly set up out of the box. I did experiment with some other stack configurations, but came back to the original one from Cube Controls. I did state my concerns about how the shim system was implemented on the wheelbase or spigot side of the assembly. This will require some very close tolerances in the manufacturing process to ensure a flex-free fit between the different wheel side QRX assemblies. When I asked Cube Controls about why they decided to go this route, I was told that they have developed their manufacturing process to a standard that there will be no difference in sizes between different wheel side assemblies, and that they have tested no less than 50 wheel side units on the same wheelbase side unit with no perceived differences in fitment between them. Of course, I could not put this to the test as I only have one wheel side assembly. I can say that while using the QRX system, I didn't perceive any flex in the connection between the two sides. Driving the QRX is a non-eventful experience, which I consider to be a good thing. It just gets on with the job of providing a solid, flex-free connection 
between the wheel and force feedback motor, allowing all the force feedback tactile cues to flow freely and accurately from the force feedback motor to your hands. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.